Welcome everybody to day nine of the advanced healing course. Thank you everyone for being so patient, diligent, committed and working so hard. Now, to date over the last few months I've done the treatise on the six of the seven primordial rays. So today I'm going to do a small lecture, a small talk, um, off pat really, on the seventh ray, the violet flame of alchemy, transmutation, transformation, and ceremonial magic. Now, in many cases, I suppose in a way, it is the most powerful from perspective of a, as a healing ray. The violet flame is the ray where we take something that's sick and make it well, or help it to move into a wellness state. We take something that's well and by the power of entrainment and effective transmission, by the power of alchemy, we help it to be, increase its vitality. Um, in medieval times, the violet flame or the idea of alchemy was where you took a base metal and you transmuted it into a precious metal such as gold. And that's what most people think of when they think of alchemy. And the metaphor is absolutely fine. The idea is quite simple. You take something and under specific conditions, utilising the laws of the universe, you make it something better. You make it something more harmonised, more balanced, more aligned, healthier, more cleansed and open and purified and more reflective of, of a higher nature, shall we say. So alchemy and the violet flame is a key, key, key component in healing. And in fact, many of you who are watching this are probably attuned to Reiki. If not, you may well have had a Reiki treatment at some stage in your life. I know, running the London Reiki School, having taught Reiki to hundreds, actually thousands of people over the last 20 years, and taught well, well, well over 100 Reiki master trainers, um, Reiki was an absolute life-changing occurrence for me. Now, Reiki is a utilisation of the violet flame. The violet flame can be used without Reiki, um, but Reiki is a very effective way to access the violet flame that originated from Tibet and was resurrected, refound, the sutras or teachings were refound by Mikhail Yasui um, in the early part of the 20th century. That was then transmitted to a lineage and then it really sort of exploded um, with the new energies on the planet in the sort of late 80s, early 90s, and then became very big to becoming the most popular hands-on healing system on the planet. But what I'm gonna be talking about today is not about Reiki in particular, although Reiki, Yusui Reiki, is a way to access the violet flame, and it's a very safe way, a very a way that I've teach my children, I can teach a lot of people how to use Reiki, it's a very powerful way to access the violet flame in a very safe way. But the violet flame is a primordial ray. So when we talk about the violet flame in its purest form, we're talking about an energy that kaleidoscopically refracts from the white light of the universe in the process of manifestation. We've had the six rays previously of will, love, creativity, art, science, devotion, and the violet flame is the very flame of alchemy. It is actually, as I've described many times, a combination of the effective integration of love, the second ray, the blue ray of love, and the first ray, the red ray of divine will or intentionality. Now, above the abyss on the tree of life, above the manifest worlds, actually love and will become as one. They are effectively the same thing. In the manifest world, we see them as different things, and that's okay, but actually our aim is to align love and will together. And when we do that, we can act as gods, as co-creators, as transmitters and in trainers of the violet flame. The violet flame clears and purifies, it heals, it harmonizes, it opens, it resets and calibrates. That's what it does and that's what alchemy actually does. Now the, the Chohan that overlights the violet flame, okay, the master, the ascended master that overlights the violet flame in this level of scale, at this level of dimensions as humans that we can act whether we are moving to an ascended place or we're just simply operating through the first 12 light bodies, is Saint-Germain. Now, Saint-Germain was a historical character who was known for doing a lot of very unusual things, okay? I won't go into all that right now, but he was very much connected with Madame Blavatsky in the late 19th century, 
who formed the Theosophical Society in 1875, was one of the main and most important, important proponents of this new eon of, uh, of Aquarius and laid the ground and the foundations for the Western magical tradition to emerge. Um, she formed the Theosophy Society in 1875. From that and those connections, the Golden Dawn also emerged shortly afterwards, um, run by McGregor Mathers and others, who pieced together some of the important esoteric traditions, in particular the Holy Kabbalah, and used the Jewish mystical system, the Holy Kabbalah, as a kind of foundation stone, if you like, a touchstone, to bring together elements such as geomancy, divination, the use of the rays, and other esoteric sciences that have come together and been formulated in different ways to help us move beyond the old religious imposition of the last 2,000 years. The violet flame, if you like, is the beautiful fruit of that work. And the violet flame is when we begin to really recognize and activate, or have it activated in us, our ability to transmute and transcend. To transmute means we can use the violet flame to change our environment. It's the idea that we can reorder, that we bring beautiful, good, changing energy to lift something up from separation, from sickness, from stuckness, whatever you want to call it, from disease, for, from dissonance into vibrational harmony, vibrational harmony. So I'm always excited about the violet flame and I want to share a little bit about my work in conjunction with the violet flame. As people have been watching these videos will probably gather and those certainly who've done the harmonic resonance healing levels one, two or three with me will recognize that the masters and the angelic ones have shown me a particular set of protocols and they show me the matrix of how the light body actually works in its ascended form. In fact, we are multidimensional creatures, meaning we have the, the capability and the capacity and the potential to operate through various scales of consciousness. Um, and generally, most people on the planet operate through the first dimension, so-called. We often call it 3D or th dimension 3, but it's actually the first dimension. It just means the light is slowed down and we operate and perceive information through our cognitive minds predominantly. Okay, And then we build up consensual beliefs around that that define our existence. They give definition and meaning which we share to our existence. Now, that, that, sounds, that sounds fine, right? And it's great for convenience. The problem with that is when we define something, when we create a belief, we're also cutting out a lot of other things. And in fact, what's been happening as the, the light of this planet has changed, because the planet is moving into the uh, galactic photonic beam, everything is starting to open up. So we really do need as much help we, we, we can get from upstairs as we move beyond the previously well-defined ways of operating. And that's one of the reasons, probably the main reason, there's so much confusion and the world. The Pandora's box, if you like, has been opened. And when I say that, I'm talking about the light body, the light body that contains the subtle information about our previous existences through space and time, the reincarnation existences and the wheel of karma going round and round. Most of that's been hidden from most people from most generations. Okay, those that information and that energy is being released now in a Pandora's box of opening. Thus, we have a world that is very polarized and confused. A lot of people are back to front. I know this because I work with a healing practice every day, giving people transformational tools to help them move away from separation into a new perspective. And that new perspective, the way that's best to operate is rather than just limiting it through the definition of the mind, is opening the heart up and operating from a heart-centered place that enables us to connect to a far greater perspective through the dimensions just than our own limited experience. Irrespective of how exotic our lives are or how wise or clever we think we may be or how wise or clever we might be, still our perspectives are always limited on a cognitive level to our own experience. But we have the opportunity to expand that and go beyond that experience. And part of that nature, as I've explained many times through the harmonic resonance healing, is to open up and facilitate the opening up of the subtle dimensions and our abilities as human beings to be expanded receptor transmitter systems. Now we all receive and transmit energy all the time with the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we hold ourselves, what we say and how we say it is transmitting information 
always to other people. This is just the kind of normal thing, but those processes can and may be expanded. And for me, the violet flame is probably the most important aspect of the fruits of this work because it, it means that when we can access it, and certainly when I was activated to Reiki in the mid-90s, it enabled me to do things that in, in the morning I wasn't able to do. In other words, I was able to take things and shift them in their dimensional uh, field and help people or things to get better very, very quickly. Um, and more than anything, I was able to help myself get better. So I was able to heal myself, stop myself ever getting sick or ill, uh, and clearing stuff, even when there's a disease or a cold or something coming up, I now have the abilities and I've developed them, I've worked with them, I teach those abilities to transmute or positively change or harmonize the situations where I may be attacked by pathogens or where there may be an emotional vulnerability or maybe where I got triggered or someone got triggered by something that starts off a set of dominoes that may end in a physiological dis-ease or an emotional state or just trauma held in the field. All of these things, my friends, can be transmuted. All of these things can be transmuted. And the way we do the transmutation is we call it in, okay? Now to call it in, it's one of those kind of like paradoxical things. We have to be open sufficiently to effectively call it in, okay? So it's a little bit of a catch-22. So how do we open sufficiently? Well, I got opened by when people started to actually attune me and I started to do the work with, and I had to work hard to find teachers of quality, but I did find one or two who were able to do activations. They were able to uniquely open my field, open the latent aspects of my field so that the violet flame could come through and I started to be able to heal things. It was quite extraordinary when it started. And I took those principles and I expanded them over the subsequent years and with various visitations from masters, um, unusual alien beings, angelic beings, and the rest of it that have communicated with me in different, very unusual ways and the people I associate with the community I've built. We then take those elements and expand them. And what I just wanted to say about the light body and the 144 light body system and the violet flame is the violet flame in, in, in traditional Reiki is on a, on, a, on a very gentle level, okay, but it can be expanded. And the way it can be expanded is when all 144 light bodies are opened in the field, each of those light bodies operates at a different frequency according to a sacred proportionality, which I was referred to as the angelic code. It's the spiraling Fibonacci series. And when light increases at that level of sacred proportionality, another sheath of energy comes online, okay? Another sheath of energy comes online, okay? In other words, another latent aspect of ourselves is activated and we can operate through it within that new sheath of energy or light body, one of the 144, exists the potential to operate the seven rays, the primordial rays, through that particular sheath or light body. So each light body has seven rays working through it. So seven times 144 is 1008, which is why I often refer to it in meditation, I call in the divine light of 1000 souls or 1008 souls, okay? So basically we have, we are basically made of collapsed light according to sacred geometrical principles. And within that collapsed light, once we begin to open up the subtle matrices within that Taurus field, and really open up and cleanse and purify and harmonize and recalibrate and resurrect and return ourselves back to a true nature and power. When that process really starts to build momentum, then the little violet flames or big violet flames on each light body can come into being. And so what happens is, as I've explained and shown and demonstrated, is as we become more open activated and integrated within our understandings. Once we start to really clear our stuff, the trauma, the pain, the sorrow, the suffering, the triggering, the karma, the rest of all the stuff that we carry in varying forms, the baggage, we can then start to become enabled, enabled or activated to carry the violet flame in this particular instance through the 144 light bridge. So the ability, the power 
to shift reality, the power to entrain, that means to positively affect our environment simply by holding a verticalized state with a violet flame grows exponentially. It grows and grows and grows, okay? And so the work that I'm doing really is about activating what I call the violet alchemical child, which is the marriage, okay? And this is a metaphor, okay? The marriage of the Christ rising, the Christos, crystal land energy, which is the red, the red uh, triangle that goes upwards, Christ rising. And then there's the Magdalena, the love receiving, okay? The love, okay, flowing down. That's the Magdalena. So the blue, if you imagine the blue and red triangles intersecting to create a star, a six-pointed star, which sits in the 12 petal lotus of the heart center. That six-pointed star, the middle of it, the combination of the effective utilization of will, the effective utilization of love in the now expanded and open light body generates the violet center. And that violet center is actually us as gods. And when I say as gods, we have the abilities as humans, different from any other animal on the planet, to encapsulate all elements of the universal continuum. I know that sounds a bit strange because let's be honest, most people aren't very godlike. Let's be honest about it. Uh, and most people are just dealing with their own stuff. There's no judgment, but we have the potential, evolutionary potential to be like a Christ, like a Babaji, like a Buddha, like an Elijah, like an Ezekiel, like a Muhammad, like any of these prophets who came brought stuff through and they weren't necessarily perfect but these great prophets brought information and abilities through and they brought aspects of the truth the light of gnosis and what they all kind of taught really was love is very important and what they all taught in different ways is to open ourselves up to something beyond the limitations of our mind some taught meditation some taught practicing love others were more will focused but nonetheless all of them had the same essence in their teachings and what made christ different what made buddha different or babaji different or ezekiel different was simply this they were more activated than the average human being they had more dna online the junk dna so called by scientists comes online and then we can operate as an expanded matrix. Now, very often I've used this metaphor and I will use it again. It's like having two phones. One from 1985, the famous Motorola brick, which I had long, long, long time ago, and a new smartphone like an iPhone 11 or whatever it might be. Two, 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 two communication devices working on the same principles, but one far more advanced, far more evolved, far more subtly aligned than the other. Same principle, and that's a little bit like the uninitiated human. The basic human does the basic mundane things. You get up, you go to work, you go and watch a movie, you eat dinner, you chat, you go home, you have sex, you do whatever you do. Your basic life, okay, operating through the cognitive mind. When we open up, it's like a caterpillar coming out of a cocoon. The cocoon breaks open and the caterpillar starts to come out, but it's not quite a caterpillar anymore because it's had these activations. Its wings start to come online, it stretches, and eventually it breaks out of the cocoon. It's a little bit painful at first, it's a little bit tricky to get its wings, and eventually it starts flapping, it hurts a bit. Eventually it gets into the flow, and that's what the ascension process is like. Okay, and alchemy is the process of activating that ascension process. The alchemy transmutes, translates the energies into a new formulation because, my friends, we have, and this is the great news, we have within our field this blueprint, this divine ability that has not yet been activated. Now, different religious teachers have talked about it in different ways. Christ talked about the second coming. And I personally believe the second coming of the Christos Christ Krishna energy, or if you're a Jew, Tifarit energy, is simply the idea that we too can have the DNA activated. We too can have a unique and special expanded connection to source, like the Buddha did, like the Christ did, like some of the other great prophets we hear about also did. And as a result of that unique connection, as a result of that expanded ability to transmit and transmute, we can perform what others would describe as miracles. So sometimes people say, oh, you performed a miracle, Simon. For me, it's not like that anymore. It's only a miracle by comparison to something that we don't know. So if you showed someone in 1985 
uh, an, an iPhone 11 compared to the brick, they'd say that's a miracle. How can that be? How can you talk and see each other on the phone and do all these incredible things? It would be beyond the average person's thinking process then. It would just be a dream. Now it's a reality. And it's the same, my friends, pardon the crude metaphor, but it's the same with the light body, okay? We are opening and expanding. Yes, we hear about artificial intelligence and computers and how it's going to overtake the world. I'm not bothered about that because I know the organic sentience based around the carbon atom, based around the number six, based around the complex prote protein molecules, the fully activated DNA will enable us to move to a place which previous times we would have called, we would have thought it was impossible. It's just a miracle. It's like a Christ. Yes, we all have the potential. We all have the potential to reverse the aging process, to lengthen our telomeres, and to command our physical bodies to act in certain ways. We have the potential to end disease on this planet. We have the potential to cleanse and purify just by our consciousness, just by our mind, our whole light body. The physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, etheric, astral, quantum, electric, and Christ over self bodies. All of these have the potential to be purified by us. But to do that, we have to be activated first. We have to get into the rhythm of the purification, just like the, the caterpillar has to break from that cocoon. It's hard at first. Sometimes we need a little help. Not someone to rescue us, but someone to step in and show us, to activate us, to give us a little hand like I was given a little hand. And the violet flame is basically the most brilliant, the purest form of that transmutation that transmission, that ability to take something and positively, actively enhance its nature. That's what the violet flame does. There's 144 violet flames and the more ascended we are, the more powerful, the more direct, the more precise and the more intense that violet flame can be to facilitate the miracle that this planet needs at this time. We can change our environment, we can change water, we can change, I've done it before many times, change the taste of food just by doing the hands-on healing, just by transmitting the violet flame. The violet flame is the flame of transmutation, alchemy and ceremonial magic. And you, my friends, all have that latent ability within your field. Okay, you all have it, we all have it. This work is about refining it, activating us, clearing us, clearing the blockages, clearing the programs, clearing all the stuff that's prevented us in different ways from living our true nature, our true soul path, and living an activated and aligned life to the infinite source. And that infinite source of the colourless ray refracts to the white light of Metatron. And that ray through a prism goes to the main primordial rays of red, blue, yellow, green, indigo and violet. And orange, almost forgot. And that violet flame is the last of the rays. It's the one that when all the other things are aligned, we come in and we co-create our reality using the power of transmission, transmutation and alchemy. And for that, just call in Saint-Germain. The great Saint-Germain was the architect, the avatar of that principle, those principles that we can change our environment, not by praying to an unknown God, but by activating the Christ within, activating our own abilities as receptors and mirrors of the divine continuum. That, my friends, is the nature of alchemy.